even know what to say. <laughs> Once again, I tried to do a pick a pile for you guys. Um, this was going to be your current connection, public pick a pile. I still want to do that. But once again, as soon as I started channeling, I could feel the feminine energy not coming forth and wanting to almost like respond to the masculine energy as her version or her perspective of the divine masculine energy update that we channeled when I tried to do the pick a pile for the first time or the second time. So this is not the pick a pile. This is going to be the divine feminine energy update. Um, I'm going to link the divine masculine reading in the description box over on the divine masculine reading. I'll link the divine feminine reading. So you'll have both interesting how it wasn't coming out as a sacred union energy update this was very distinct energies but it's all there it's all the same cards it's the same energy this is in response to each other um so take it as it resonates for you i would make sure that you watch both uh it's gosh i i swear i'm gonna do the pick a pile sometime this week i want you guys to have that i'm gonna do it um, but it's really interesting that this is what wanted to come forth. And it feels like it's important. It feels like this is where we are, um, where we have been. And it feels like this is the tr transition, stepping into this new beginning, this reunion energy that we've been channeling that's going to be happening over these next couple of weeks. Um, so <sighs> enjoy this one, you guys. Let's leave me a, a comment. Let me know how this resonates with you. Um, make sure you're checking out the masculine video as well. And we will have a Sacred Union Energy update later this week to follow up and see what's going on here uh, within the union, within the masculine and the feminine energies. But it seems like both of you wanted your say in your own videos. So we're going we're gonna to let that stand. All right, here is the Divine Feminine reading. I just want to say, I try to do your reading um, and unexpectedly we were channeling for the divine masculine for the collective so if you pick this pile then i would recommend checking out the divine masculine energy update because there might be some additional messages that are there for you um i had tried doing another reading and the divine masculine was coming in i tried doing your pick a pile for group number one and the divine masculine was coming in so i guess that reading just wanted to be done um and now we're getting to yours but check that out because there might be some additional messages there for you to understand what's happening within your connection to help navigate you forward okay so let's see what is happening in your connection currently what is happening for your current connection group number one group number one what's happening for your connection we have the high priestess this feels this feels more like your your reading here. High Priestess, Eight of Cups, Ace of Swords. We have Strength. <laughs> and let's get one more card, please. And we have the sun. Interesting. Okay. So this feels much more aligned with today's pick a pile, with today's reading. But again, do check it out because it might give you a glimpse of the other side that the Divine Masculine in your connection is experiencing to help you kind of navigate um, your part in your role. Remember that every reading that you get um, that's experienced, it has to do with you as well. Um, because relationships are our greatest reflection, our greatest catalyst for our own internal growth. So even if you're getting a reading done or watching a pick a pile or collective reading about another person, take it as reflection for yourself. How can you learn from it? How can you grow from it? Um, how can you have compassion for the other person? How can you experience more love? How can you see things from a different perspective? Um, you know, it, it, they're always it's not just about the other person it's always about you as well maybe you need to shift perspectives maybe you need to understand or have more compassion maybe you need to have more patience maybe you, there's something for you to learn to grow or experience maybe you need to stand up for yourself more maybe you need to express yourself more you know a thousand different ways that could play out but it's for you as well okay um high priestess eight of cups ace of swords strength and the sun i feel like you are 
very in tune with yourself, very in tune with your gifts. This feels more like the feminine energy, which was interesting because it felt more like the masculine energy. And the majority of my subscribers are feminine energy. So again, take it as it resonates for you. You can also reverse the roles here. Um, but this feels like more like the feminine energy, which is why I'm going to say the you and they could be the masculine. Again, take it in the reverse if it resonates that way. But I feel like you are very in tune with yourself. You're very connected to yourself right now. And as such, I feel like your gifts are very heightened. Um, and I feel like you might e actually even be uh, connecting telepathically with your person. I'm actually getting this from the masculine, like the masculine might be the one that's trying to telepathically connect with you. And so you're feeling their energy. Um, but a, a connection can't just be telepathic. I mean, it could be. Um, but it's not, it's usually not, especially when you're having this physical experience. Um, so I feel like you might be kind of done with that. Um, you, I feel like you might actually be walking away from that and saying, you know what, I've deserved more, um, that I want more. I don't just want energetic telepathic communication. I want more. And this feels like you just walking away from that past version of yourself, past version of relationship, past version of your masculine, because you connected with yourself and you decided, okay, I know what I want. I know what's in my heart. I know what's in my future. I know what I, it is that I want to create for myself when it comes to connection, when it comes to relationship. And what I was accepting before just wasn't feeling good. It just wasn't feeling healthy. It wasn't helping me feel secure. It wasn't helping me feel encouraged. It wasn't helping me feel good in my life. It might have taught me a lot, but it wasn't, I did that work myself. It wasn't helping me feel like the best version of myself that I could possibly be. And so it was a catalyst for me to become that best version of myself, but I had to do a lot of that walking away from what wasn't healthy in order to discover what is. And so I feel like with this Ace of Swords here, this is you just standing up and for yourself and saying, you know what? I recognize myself now. I recognize my truth. I recognize my soul. I recognize my self-expression. I recognize who I am. And I want to stand firm in this, um, wanting to be able to express yourself, wanting to be able to share that with somebody, I feel, as well. So I feel like the strength came out in reverse, and I don't usually take reversals, but I'm getting some of that energy here because I feel like there are two messages here. I feel like this is you stepping into your self-mastery, saying, you know what? I want somebody who's going to stand beside me. I want this emperor. I'm getting Aslan energy here from the Chronicles of Narnia, um, Aslan being that leader, um, Aslan being that that masculine energy. Um being that that Christ consciousness character, right? That's what this feels like. It feels like wanting somebody, I'm the high priestess, I want somebody to stand beside me, to be beside me in that energy. Um, so I feel like this is this is you recognizing your own worth, your own self mastery, and choosing the path of love, choosing the path of, of higher consciousness and wanting somebody who's going to match that. The second message is there's this tornado in the background and where there were these storms, um, especially this, this cloudiness within your mind, confusion within your mind, um, maybe there were some toxic elements in this connection, unhealthy elements within this connection, some confusion within this connection. You are, that's clearing, that the sun's coming out, that's really clearing. There's room for joy there's room for celebration here now um because you really stepped into your power this ace of swords feels like you taking the sword for your how do i say this claiming yourself claiming your self-empowerment claiming your your personal power um where power had been stripped from you or, or suppressed or taken away or where you had given it away you know you accept your responsibility for yourself where you had given it away now you're stepping into your power, into your truth, and saying, you know what? I'm not denying myself who I am anymore. I'm not denying myself my heart, and I'm certainly not going to deny myself what I want for my life. This high priestess feels like um, very prophetic, uh, very much like seeing her future and deciding that she wants her highest path for her future, and that's where she had to walk away from unhealthiness, from insecurity, from anything that was causing her unhappiness or, or anxiety. And so now she's like, I recognize what it is that I want, and I want my partner who is going to stand beside me in this higher consciousness so that we can create joy and happiness and love together. Um, 
I feel like you're creating this. You're, you are creating your sacred union. It might look a little bit different than what you had expected, but you are creating your sacred union here. Let's get some more and see what this is about. The devil. Yep, this is tied to that Divine Masculine reading. But it feels like this is the reverse side. This feels like this is the Divine Feminine. So if you're Divine Masculine and want to see your side of it, check out the Divine Masculine reading. You know what? I just might make this a uh, Divine Feminine reading. We'll see. <laughs> Divine feminine counteract to this. Interesting. Tell me more about this. Tell me, help me understand the devil. Tell me more about this. Yeah. You, yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. We're just going to give up on the pick a pile today because this is going to be the divine feminine counteract to this divine masculine reading you have the devil here you have the two of swords and you have the six of swords divine feminine you recognize the toxic elements that were at play here you see how the divine masculine represented here is looking at the devil represented and the feminine is looking at him like don't take it don't take it she's turning away from what he's tempting her with and she's like don't take it and he's looking at her like possibly possibly divine feminine um i feel like you recognized these toxic elements within the masculine now that's not to say that he's toxic you've always recognized your masculine for who he is the truth of who he is the the, the very heart and soul of who he is you've always seen this within him um and it's not about seeing his highest potential as i said in the other video this is about accepting who he is but also challenging him to be great and that is what the divine feminine does because the divine feminine sees all layers and all aspects and she she sees a, a greater picture a bigger picture um for for everybody for the world she sees this greater picture and that can sometimes get her into trouble uh what i mean by that is um she has such a deep-seated belief in the good and because she sees the higher picture she's not seeing the devil here i mean she sees the devil but she, but she's seeing um a way to break free from it she's seeing that the devil is as it's represented here by toxicity is just a pattern or it's a choice or it's a new decision to make or it's a new mindset or a new belief or a new perspective to have it's not getting caught in the same traps in the same loops she sees this and she challenges the world as feminine energy she challenges um, the people around her in the world to to think differently or to look at things differently especially to look within the self whereas the divine masculine may have had a hard time looking within the self the divine feminine that comes that that introspection that reflection comes almost naturally to her because she is so connected to herself she's so connected to the higher realms um it's been harder for the masculine especially when it comes to taking self-responsibility when it comes to taking accountability because it feels like the shadow is so thick and there's a layer of shame that's around there but shame is um, just self-judgment and shame doesn't have to exist it doesn't have to be part of that reality and so she's looking at the masculine like um, please don't please don't be tempted back to your old version of yourself back to the comfort back to the familiar back to who you you were I, I believe in you I know that that you can um, I know that you can be different it's not wanting him to change but challenging him to grow. And there is a huge difference. Wanting somebody to change comes with it its own energy of control. And the divine feminine is not about that at all. But she challenges him to grow because she sees the desire for that within him. And so she challenges that. There's a huge difference. And you can feel it by the energy. You can feel it by the energy. If you put two um, feminine energies side by side, one being the divine feminine and one still being perhaps in that distorted feminine energy, and you, you take a look at this, you can see one might be expressing a desire for change, for that person to change, but that's in an energy of control. And one might be expressing or challenging that person to, to grow. 
and that's in the energy of wanting them to be their best self, wanting their happiness. That's the energy of unconditional love. And what I'm also hearing is um, disagreeing is not control. You're allowed to disagree with each other. That's part of the challenge to grow, the challenge to see things from new perspectives. So she's she's kind of looking at him like this, and it's almost like um, I'm getting this like alchemist energy. This um, if you guys have have read the Alchemist, it's like you know that you need to go on your own journey sometimes. Um, the alchemist has been coming through in my client coaching sessions as homework. It's been coming through in um, some of these energy update readings, collective readings that I've done. Um, so I really encourage you guys to read The Alchemist. I might have to read it myself. We might have a book club. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll have a book club over on the, the Spiritual Connections community on Facebook. Um, but this really feels like recognizing um, that she can't force this this growth within him she can only encourage she can only support but sometimes uh it means her walking away if sometimes it means her walking away for him to go on his own journey and I feel like that's what happened here because we have the two of swords and we have the six of swords and it feels like she had to make a choice she had to make a choice for herself to step out of a very difficult cycle that you were both caught in you were both caught in a karmic loop and she saw it and she saw how unhealthy it was and she was able to see the bigger picture of the future and what would happen if you continue that pattern. And so she had to make a decision and it was a difficult decision, but I'm getting this energy if she didn't go into it blindly, it was where she was guided to go and she had to follow her heart and she had to follow her intuition, which is the epitome of the high priestess, the epitome of the divine feminine. And the divine feminine is the high priestess. I know sometimes the empress is the high priestess as well, but uh, when we're speaking about the, the spiritual realms, the spiritual level of this ascension journey, the high priestess is the embodiment of the divine feminine. And so she didn't go into this blindly. It wasn't just a um, hasty decision she really had to think about um, about both of you she had both of you in mind um, and I'm, it was feeling like the, the hardest decision to step away from perhaps the connection or perhaps the uh, whatever this was she had to step away from toxic elements maybe she closed down communication or maybe she there was communication that was closed down by the masculine and she took a step back and said I'm giving your space I'm, I'm going on your journey um, maybe she walked away from the relationship maybe she um, whatever this was whatever this was there was decisions that that had to be made to step out of that cycle and and she had to find that strength within her in order to do it for herself for herself primarily but when you're in these kind of connections it's all one in the same and because she made that decision for herself to step into her higher power it's almost like that's what's helping the divine masculine to break free from where they were and old energies of where they were um and with the six of swords here i we were getting this energy as well this sneaking away um this this moving forward energy uh for the divine masculine this felt very much tied to the seven of swords but here it's like moving forward moving into calmer waters um not wanting to look back there was part of the past that she was still clinging to you see how she's looking back there's part of the past that she was still clinging to there was a lot of regret there was a lot of not regret there's a lot of um because there's no guilt tied to this um, because she knows it was what she had to do but there's this sense of of longing there's this sense of um sadness nostalgia um that's coming through here so she's looking back so it's not really regret as in like guilt or shame or anything like that but she's looking back as in like i wish it was different but she knows that she had to continue on she knows she had to make this choice to get out of this devil energy and because she made this choice to get out of this devil energy um it's shifting the whole connection now i want to be very specific your divine counterpart might display these elements but they're not toxic in and of themselves if, if it is a toxic situation, then that's not your true counterpart. Um, 
I should say if your person is toxic in and of themselves, that's not your true counterpart, they might display these elements because they're in the wounded state or they're healing that wounded state, um, but it's not a, a true divine counterpart. Uh, there, I don't want to mistake this and say that toxicity cannot exist within these connections. It certainly can, but the way we, we understand it is that you're not toxic inherently to each other. It's the projections. It's the wounding from the past. It's the experiences, the triggers that come up. It's, it's all the projected stuff. It's not you two against each other. It's all the projections that come up between you that create this toxicity. And that's where you had to escape from or that's where you had to remove yourself from, walk away from, from those projections um, to be able to heal on your own. And I talk about that in the Twin Flame Truths channelings. And I talk about that a lot um, on my channel where sometimes that separation has to happen so that you can go to your separate corners and heal so that you're not constantly bombarding each other with projections because that's all it is, is projection. Your projection, projecting your abandonment or your rejection or your neglect or your, your, your pain onto your counterpart, but that was from your past. It's your ego that's rising up and projecting all of that onto each other, but it's not necessarily each other. So that's what you had to walk away from. You had to walk away from, from that toxic energy, but you're not inherently toxic to each other. You're not toxic people. Um, so that's a, a really big distinction. So allow yourself to go deeper within your heart space and use your discernment, uh, use your intuition to determine, you know, what's going on here. Um, but for, for this connection that I'm picking up on, it you're not inherently toxic. It's just old energy that you're in, old projections that you're in, old wounding that you're in, old distorted states of being that you're in. Um, and again, listen to the Divine Masculine energy update because I feel like this is really like the, the antithesis of that. It's, the, it's the, the, the counterpart to that where the Masculine is recognizing that they were in this, this state of toxicity and breaking free from it, but it was familiar to them. It's all they've known. This could be control. This could be manipulation. This could be greed. This could be corruption. This could be low self-worth. This could be whatever it was. Um, it could be all of it. Whatever it was, they were stuck in that old energy, but their heart, that's not their heart. That's not their soul. That's not who they truly are. They just have had a hard time understanding who they truly are, connecting with their true self. And that's what this journey has really brought them. It's brought them their true self. And so what's happening here is the feminine had to, to in essence, take the spiritual lead and walk away while the masculine is taking the physical lead and coming towards in the authentic state. So the feminine had to to be in that energy of unconditional love because it was unconditional love in which she walked away. Um, it was recognizing that you couldn't exist in that energy anymore, energetically or physically, whether you had a physical relationship or an energetic relationship, you couldn't exist in that energy anymore. Um, it just wasn't healthy. And so you had to break free from the pattern and even in a sense, break free from the connection as it was because it was not in that healthy state. It was not in that conscious state. And so that moved her into this place of self-empowerment. It moved her into this place of, of no longer abandoning herself, no longer betraying herself and her values, no longer sacrificing her needs or her wants or her desires, no longer overgiving. She really stepped into that empress energy. We're going to call it the empress energy now as a divine feminine because this is her physical form, the empress stepped into the empress energy and that made the divine masculine really reflect and, and feel the energy shift and it called him to rise up into his masculine energy his conscious masculine energy where he had to free himself from his toxic elements where he might have been very passive he might have not expressed himself he might not have allowed himself to be vulnerable he might have not allowed himself to have that kind of stability or structure in his life to be that that disciplined person um, where he might have not been able to commit to himself, to this connection, to his feminine, where he was not able to fully honor the feminine. So it made him see himself clearly and rise into that state. And so the feminine energetically leads. This is what she energetically led. She, she stepped into her place of self-empowerment and the masculine leads in the physical. The masculine in essence, understands what the feminine's doing energetically, trusts in the feminine, 
and her insight and her awareness and her understanding, her intuitiveness. And he takes that and then he applies that to the physical. That's where the masculine leads. They lead in the physical world. And so he's coming towards the feminine in healthier connection because he took all of that and understood it and applied it to himself. I'm going to be a better person. I want to be a better person. Here's how I can make changes and different choices in my life and break these patterns of who I was to become who I know I am, who my feminine has always thought that I was or believed in me to be. And I believe in myself now. That's part of their journey of self-actualization, believing in themselves and having that confidence within themselves and not looking externally to receive that. And so the, the masculine then steps forward and leads the connection and the physical um, taking action to commit, to come together, to communicate. So the feminine really had to go through this process of, of walking away. Um, again, there's a split. It's going to be in a number of different ways. You are on this path of sacred union, divine feminine. It could be with your masculine who has transformed, who you always believed was your masculine. It could be with another conscious masculine who is perhaps your true twin flame or your true counterpart, or even a high level soulmate who's coming in, who's going to be your life partner. So it could be in a number of different ways. Allow, don't try to fight it. Don't try to figure it out. Just allow yourself to to let it unfold because it will reveal itself when you're in this place of presence and just trusting in God and putting your faith in the universe and yourself and trusting in God um, in that co-creatorship. When, when I say in yourself and with God in that co-creatorship, I mean that you have the desire. That's part one of your co-creation. And then you trust in God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. That's part two of the co-creation. And together you are creating this. Together you are having your sacred union. You're having your partnership in the physical form. This is not just an energetic connection. It's in the physical form. But allow yourself to release how you expect it to look and, and just let it be. Because it's it might surprise you. Um, your counterpart might surprise you. The person that you thought was your counterpart might surprise you. Or the universe might surprise you uh, with bringing in a a somebody that you thought was your connection, you know, somebody, somebody else. Um, so, so just allow yourself to step into this place of, um, trust and faith and knowing that this is all unfolding. All right. This, okay. It's so funny. I cannot freaking do this pick a pile today. Um, <laughs> because this is what came out for the feminine too. I asked for feminine guidance, um, in the masculine reading and, um, this is what came out. Divine Feminines, you might be in this little bit of a sacred bubble. Um, you are very protected right now. These sacred unions, these sacred partners are extremely protected right now because you're getting a lot of psychic attacks. People don't understand this love. People don't understand this new template of relationship, of connecting, of, of, of love, of unconditional love that exists between you two. Um, because this is an old paradigm that we're still operating in, that we are shifting and that we are changing. And so there might be some, some psychic attacks or outside influences. You're going within. See how she's meditating? You're going within. I even said in that video that I'm kind of like on a silent retreat right now, except for the work that I'm doing in which I'm spending a lot of time with myself. I was working with Jesus and Mary Magdalene. They were coming in to provide insight and support and activations for me. And this is what it feels like. It feels like you're in the sacred bubble where you are just being upgraded. You're being, um, you're getting downloads, you're getting understanding and insight. And most importantly, they're saying is you are operating from this place of presence. You are connecting with yourself and connecting with God and operating from this place of presence. And so allow yourself to, to sit in the stillness, to sit in the silence. Um, and if anything is triggered, if anything comes up as far as emotions, allow it to come up because it's just coming up for release or for awareness. And you get to make choices based on that awareness of where you want to go. So allow yourself to sit in the stillness. Divine. bit more divine feminine 
three of swords in this stillness in this silence this could even be lack of communication with your partner you are healing um, that heartbreak that you might have experienced in the past but I do feel like there's this energy that's healing remember when I said there was like the stormy weather here but the sun's coming out that's what this feels like it feels like there was just rain clouds on your heart and I feel like you might have actually even had trouble believing in love maybe even believing in this love maybe you went through some periods of doubt here but I feel like through this this silence this stillness this meditation this sacred bubble you are healing this spirits really coming forth and helping you to heal this um, even if you're not in meditation, this is happening. This is happening in dream state as well, I'm hearing. What else do we need to know for the Divine Feminine? What else do we need to know for the Divine Feminine? The Fool and the Ten of Wands. I love that. Yeah. So, endings and beginnings happening all at once. Um, you had been in a period of transition, Divine Feminines, but again, this feels like success. This feels like victory. This feels like she's cheering. She. This feels like you've put down these burdens. You've put down this responsibility, this heaviness, especially when it comes to this connection. Um, believing in your Divine Masculine, but not taking on that responsibility for them, not not needing to... to change them or fix them or, or help them recognizing that they have that within themselves and that's part of why you had to walk away because you were taking that on for themselves you were you were carrying the, the whole energy of this connection you were trying to make this work you were fighting for it you were trying to help each other to grow and to heal and to come into more conscious states of connection and relationship um wanting to just make this work and it was such a heavy burden yeah the tower had a fall it was such a heavy burden and now it's like you broke free from that and you breaking free from that is what has helped your divine counterpart to go on their journey themselves and discover that confidence, discover that belief in themselves. So that doesn't mean that you don't believe in your masculine. In fact, um, you've been a guiding light for them. Your belief in them has helped them to believe in themselves, but you're not taking on the responsibility of them. You're not responsible for them. They are their own being. They are their own individual person. You might have a shared soul and a shared energetic system but they are their own person as well. And so you've understood this and you're healing from the, the past connection that you experienced with them. And it's like there's this, this sense of freedom, this sense of newness, this sense of new beginning that's coming through here. Um, I'm hearing Kate Bush's running up that hill. Um, and that's what it feels like. It feels like just... Um, you were trudging up the hill, not running up it, but trudging up it. And it's like you were willing to sacrifice your very self for this connection and even for your person. And that's the wrong energy to be in. Um, yes, you feel this just deep love for this person, but you recognize that sacrifice is the old energy. It is the old energy. There's no need to sacrifice because your partner meets you where you are. Your partner meets you where you are. Okay, tell me more. Anything else Divine Feminine needs to know? Knight of Swords. All oh, these same cards have come out in the Divine Masculine's readings. It's crazy. Um, this feels like the Divine Masculine, um, which is interesting because it's a similar spread that's coming through. This Masculine wanting, receiving their own clarity is just pointed towards you pointed towards you, wanting to communicate with you, wanting to come in towards you, feels more like a healthy and mature energy as well. Um, the Knight of Swords was paired with the King of Wands before um, in the Masculine reading, and I feel this energy here. This feels like a sense of maturity as well. Uh, maturing energy. So it's maturing. It's not complete, but it's, it's happening. There's a lot of inner growth that has been applied here. Anything else? What else? Tell me more about this energy here. The Knight of Swords energy. Tell me more about this energy here. Yeah. Three of Cups is my union card. Um, I really feel like your person is desiring to have that celebration with you, have that joy with you, and start over with you. As I said in the Mashin reading, and I said in the live stream, this Page of Cups feels like wanting to paint a new on the canvas but paint together but I feel like I'm getting the energy of okay let me explain this metaphor first so 
you have this old canvas that's been painted. That's your old connection, the old version of your connection, the old version of your relationship, whatever you experienced in your connection. Um, and maybe it was unhealthy. Maybe there were harsh words. Maybe there were harsh actions. Maybe there was a lot of pain there, right? Um, so it's there. And you know when you want to reuse the canvas, you paint over it. But the original paint is still underneath. And so it's not that you sweep it under the rug. You don't bypass it. You don't avoid it. You don't deny it. You have to acknowledge it, take responsibility for it, take accountability for it. Both of you take the roles, accountability for the roles that you both played, have healthy communication about it, um, healthy acknowledgement about it, healthy conversations about it, healthy expression about it in order to heal it. So you don't just paint over it and pretend that it goes away. You have to acknowledge it. That's what conscious connecting is all about. That's what being a conscious masculine and a conscious feminine is all about. And so... But you allow for that. You allow for, okay, the more that we heal this together in a conscious way, the more that we together are painting over it with, are you okay? You okay, good girl? The more that you are painting over it with a fresh brush. So it's like all that, that muddied energy, maybe it's coming clean again with, with white. Like you're, you're painting over it with white to make it a new canvas, right? Um to make it a new landscape, to make it a new brush. And then together you paint a new picture. But I'm getting that the Mashlin wants to start painting first. They want to show you something. They want to start setting the stage for this. It's almost like um, they want to show you that they want to start over. So I feel like this is like an offer. Um, I don't know how to explain this. It feels like, yes, together you paint the new picture. Energetically, you're, you're painting a new picture. It's energetically, you're healing this. Energetically or, or otherwise, you have to communicate in the physical about the past as well. Um, again, you don't just deny it or brush it under the rug or, or paint over it like it never existed. But I feel like the Divine Mashland wants to take that first step and offer you something. So, for example, maybe they want to give you a gift. Maybe they want to um, paint a picture for you, write you a poem, write you a song, um, something that is an expression of how they feel about you, something that is an expression of how they, they truly love you and how they truly do want a new beginning. There's some kind of offer here. It's like they want to take that for, they, okay, that's what it is. Spirit's just coming forth with it. They want to do the first brush stroke. They want the, br the first brush stroke on your new canvas they want to do that to show you that they're committed and that they're invested and that they're honoring this connection. They want, that's their offer. They want to, to take that first step towards you, um, to, to prove to you or to show to you the depth of what they're feeling and that they have always felt. And almost like I'm hearing that, that I'm a new person. I want to show you that I'm a new person. Um, because there's a lot of regret that they've had on the past of, of who they show themselves to be to you. That wasn't truly them. They were acting out of their wounded states. Um, it was a part of them. It was a part of them. It was a wounded part of them, but it wasn't the fullness of them. And you know that divine feminine, because again, you see their soul, you see their heart, you saw all aspects of them, but they were not embodying their highest self. They were not embodying that, that conscious state. They were, they were acting out of and behaving in the wounded state, which caused so much pain within this connection. They want to show you that there's change. And they want to to have that first brush stroke. And that brush stroke is a metaphor, obviously. They want to, to again, um, maybe give you a gift or, or, or write you a letter or have a conversation with you or take you on a date. Um, hearing a proper date. <laughs> a proper date. Put in the proper effort. That's what it is. They want to put in the effort and really show you that they're making the conscious effort. Not kind of the passive effort that they might have made in the past, not the bare minimum effort in the past, but they really want to make it clear to you how they feel and that they're putting in the effort, that they're committing to this and that they're honoring this. This is really, really beautiful. Yeah, Four of Pentacles, were they held back in the past? It's like, no, they're stepping up now as the emperor because they have remorse and regret of how they had treated this connection in the past. But they have gone through this transformation. They've become much more stable as the King of Pentacles, and now they want to reunite with you and an old cycle and begin a new one really want to put in the effort with the eight of pentacles here put in the effort put in the work for this connection where they had only you know 
half-assed it in the past, really wanting to show up for you, show you how much they love you. Look at all those hearts that are coming out of that cup that they're offering. Show you that love because you are their queen. You are their divine feminine. And they recognize how much love is there and how much love is within the connection within you both and wanting this success. Ending with the chariot here. Nope, ending with the three of pentacles. Ending with the king of wands. I could just keep going and going and going. Divine feminines, this might surprise you with the tower here. This might really shock you and surprise you. Wow. <laughs> now that we just got half the deck on the table, this is going to be the end of the reading. I think we're going to end it here. I did not expect to do this reading today. I'm, it's interesting that Spirit had me split it up between Divine Mash and Divine Feminine. Every time I went to do the pick a pile, it's like, this is what happened. First, the masculine energy came out. And then here, the feminine energy wanted to come out. So we're going to just, you know, end it here. I'm going to try to record the pick a pile tomorrow. So we'll see what happens then. Um, but this is the one I wanted to come out today. So here you have it, guys. <laughs> I hope it resonates for you. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment if it did. Um, and uh, yeah, let me know. I'm sending you guys so much love and so much light. And we'll, we'll see what happens next time. Bye.